what is the worst commercial available antenna you've ever owned? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to look up the brand on that one, but I have a six meter uh, d- uh, wire dipole that uh, is sitting in my junk box right now. I used it maybe twice and got one contact, but maybe two contacts out of it uh, and the whole time I've used it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's better to avoid the brand name of it. <laughs> yeah. Probably we won't say any brand names on air, but uh, yeah, I, I'm trying yeah. to remember myself. Um, most of the commercial antennas that I've bought, they've all been pretty good. I was trying to start the G5 RV wars again. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we've got a video on that. <laughs> Check the back catalog, folks. Yeah. So I yeah. I just I just put a link up to uh, an antenna that came w- with my FT817 when I bought it used um, many years ago, and it's called a, a Miracle Whip antenna, and it uh, supposedly operates from 3.5 to 450 megahertz, so 80 meters to 70 centimeters, and it's. Um, it's got uh, basically a variable inductor inside, um, extremely inefficient variable inductor, uh, for at least for the amount of loading it provides. And uh, oh, I want to say it's uh, how long? Fifty inch, five zero, fifty inch telescoping whip. Actually, mine I think came with a, just a BNC connector on it, so you could stick whatever you know VHF type uh, antenna uh, on that BNC connector. And you could actually use it to, to receive and listen uh, and it would hear stronger signals uh, and it would, you know, it would, the signal strength would pick up when you adjusted that, that inductor, uh, variable inductor to the right range, but it was completely worthless as a transmit antenna. Um, I, I don't think I ever made a contact on that thing and I didn't try much cause I knew how bad it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I have seen sometimes CB antennas, uh, for 27 megahertz CB advertised and they'll be say mobile antennas and they'll advertise them as five eighths, five eight antennas. But there's the one thing you need to be careful of is that a five eighth antenna on 27 megahertz is about seven meters long. What's that in feet? I'm not sure what that is in feet, but it's very, very long. When you actually look at this antenna, it's actually fairly short and they do have a little bit of base loading, but I don't think that they're going to fit that much wire in the base. So you need to, yeah. I suppose, just do a bit of research and check out what antenna you're actually buying. Yeah, and you know there, there are some some uh, characteristics of antennas that are are competing factors. Um, and if you if you want to smell the BS on an antenna advertisement, look for. Um, uh, the, the, the three factors in an antenna are the antenna size, the antenna's bandwidth or broadband uh, or multiband functionality, and the antenna's efficiency or gain. And you're, you're never going to have a small antenna that's broadband and high gain. It just does not exist. So each time you... you um, sacrifice or, or gain an advantage in one of those, it, it's a trade-off on the others. So there, there's a reason that, that I keep coming up with and building larger and larger and more ridiculous antennas to bring up to mountaintops. It's because size does matter when it comes to antennas if you want performance <laughs> and broadband functionality. <laughs> 